Welcome back to the Cordis Vacuum Guide and in this video, we'll be looking at Roborock's latest product, the S7 Max V Ultra. This product could probably be the next phenomenon in the robot vacuum industry, combining two features previously available in different products. I've tested a lot of robots and none of them has a self-emptying and pad washing feature. It's not the only product combining these features, but it's the first I've reviewed. So the base station doesn't only empty the robot's dustbin, it also cleans the pad. One disadvantage of marrying both features is the size increase. You can see that the S7 Max V base station is much bigger than the Roomba J7 and Roborock S7 Plus. There are two variations, the S7 Max V and the S7 Max V Ultra. The S7 Max V is cheaper but only comes with a traditional dock without a self-emptying and pad washing feature, while the S7 Max V Ultra has it. Roborock also introduced several new upgrades in its software, including a new 3D map that provides a new perspective on tracking the robot during the cleaning cycle. And according to the Roborock website, it has a third type called the Matrix, which is a more detailed version of the 3D map. But I didn't see this feature unlocked during my tests, only the 3D map feature. Another upgrade Roborock put in is the Reactive AI 2.0 Obstacle Avoidance Algorithm, combining the twin lens camera and laser sensors. I've tested it on various obstacles like wires, pet feces, and toys with mixed results. The S7 Max V has the same virarized feature as the previous flagship, the S7 Plus, but the new mop cleaning feature helps the pad last longer before getting dirty. It has the same vibrating mopping pad, providing better agitation than robots without it. Unlike its primary competitor, the Ecovax D-Bot X1 with the dual rotating pads, the S7 Max V Ultra uses a single pad with a vibrating element in the middle. This vibrating element helps with removing stains, even tough ones like juice stains. However, this robot cannot pick up liquid as it drags a damp pad on the surface. So I don't recommend it for cleaning wet spills because of this limitation. Another variance from the S7 Plus is the S7 Max V's pre-mopping cycle, where the robot reverses towards the dock to have the pad pre-soaked before mopping. So there's no need to pre-wash the pad which was the case with all the Roborock options that didn't have the self-washing base. Another enhancement is a self-refilling feature where the clean water tank inside the base station refills the water tank inside the robot, extending the range without having to refill the water tank. I've spent the past week testing these upgrades and how these new features translate to real-world performance, so let's get into it. The S7 Max V Ultra is Roborock's latest flagship, combining two features previously available in different products. And the biggest upgrade is the base station that not only empties the robot's dustbin but also washes the pad. This addition means consumers don't have to remove the pad as often to wash as the base station does it for them. But how effective is this feature at keeping the pad clean? This was how the pad looks after the pad washing cycle after doing the mopping test on red wine and coke stains. Not bad considering these stains tend to stick on the pad. However, adding the pad cleaning feature increases the base station size. The clean and dirty water tanks and the bag housing are lined up horizontally, taking up a lot of space. One downside with this design is the compromised water tank capacity. The clean water tank has a 3 liter capacity, while the dirty water tank has a 2.5 liter capacity. These are smaller than robots with only a pad washing feature. The bag capacity is also smaller than the S7 at only 2.5 liters, so there will be a need to refill and dispose more often. It has the same RAM style dock as the S7 Plus with the port connecting to the robot's brush roll and the pad cleaning mechanism in front of it. The next feature we'll look at is obstacle avoidance. Roborock first introduced it in the S6 Max V, but they've enhanced it in the S7 Max V, calling it Reactive AI 2.0. It combines the twin lens camera system and laser sensors. I've tried it on various obstacles with mixed results. It did do a lot of avoiding objects like slippers, shoes, pet feces, coiled wires, small toys, and stuff within the sensor's line of sight. The app is also quite accurate at identifying these obstacles even in real time, except for this toy giraffe that it thinks is a shoe. However, it struggles with stretched out wires as it gets too close to the wire and wraps around the brush. It also didn't avoid this weighing seal completely and tried going over it several times. Roborock also added an LED light below the lens to help illuminate its path in low light conditions. So the obstacle avoidance technology will still function even in dark conditions thanks to the LED and laser sensors. Overall, the S7 Max V obstacle avoidance 
is better than an S6 Max V, especially in avoiding stuff like pet feces, coiled wires, and small toys, with the later sensor supplementing the twin lens camera. The laser sensor also aids with 3D map creation, which is an option if you want a different perspective in tracking the robot. Robrock also added the quick mapping feature, something previously not available. It shortens the map creation process significantly because it doesn't need to go to every nook and cranny of your home to draw the map. This feature takes full advantage of LiDAR's rapid and precise 360 degree laser scanning to determine the walls, then puts them on the map. LiDAR robots offer better precision than camera based robots, resulting in better efficiency, which is seen in this coverage test, where it picked up nearly everything after the first pass. Like all next generation Robora options, the S7 Max V goes in straight lines. There's also a crisscross pattern, but it's only available when you use selective room cleaning or zone cleaning. It has the same containment features as the S7, which includes invisible wall, no go zones, and no map zones for blocking off limit areas. It also retains the same bristleless all rubber brush and the Viber Rise technology found in the S7. The S7 Max V has around the same airflow as the S7, so expect the same performance as the previous flagship option. It's excellent on surface debris on both hard floors and carpets, but only average with deep cleaning. Despite the low airflow, the all rubber brush can pick up dust even at the lowest setting. This proves that the Roborock brush design has excellent agitation like a Roomba without relying too much on airflow. But the S7 Max V is more efficient than most Roombas, picking up most of the quicker oats I scattered in the coverage test after the first pass. The bristleless brush is also excellent at picking up hair, getting 163% from 5 and 7 inch strands. One potential quirk is that hair will wrap on the axles, especially long strands, so it's something to look at during the maintenance cleanups. Unfortunately, the S7 Max V's round frame hinders its performance cleaning edges. It didn't do well cleaning this area. Another strength of the S7 Max V is its mopping ability. It retains the same vibrarized feature, so the pad vibrates, helping it clean stains more efficiently and rises when it detects carpet. It's the same technology as the older S7 variant, but the S7 Max V Ultra has the mop cleaning feature. The vibrating pad was decent at cleaning juice and coke stains, needing only one pass. The Roborock app provides several options with scrub intensity and map routes. Choose the deep option to get the best results, as it instructs the robot to make tighter turns. But I wouldn't recommend it on stains like this because it will leave a sticky residue. For non-sticky stains and daily mopping duties, it will be decent. Please note that it will not pick up liquid, so avoid using it on wet spills. The S7 Max B will run for up to 180 minutes in a quiet setting, and it did well at least with dust, which is what this robot will deal with daily. Roborock says it will recharge 30% faster than previous options with off-peak charging. Lastly, we'll look at the upgrades in the Roborock app. The first I'll share is a 3D map that provides consumers with a different perspective on viewing their home layout. It looks like a 3D rendering, but it doesn't capture the exact details I thought it would based on the info I saw on the Roborock website. The graphic shows mostly walls and in some instances, issue graphic, but not the intricate details like the rail here or the bed on the second floor. The front camera also doubles as a CCTV so folks can see what the robot sees. There will be privacy concerns so Roborock put in encryption plus pattern security, and the images captured by the camera aren't saved. The S7 Max V also has a built-in mic so you can talk to the people inside your home through the robot. Roborock provides these options in a reactive AI obstacle avoidance feature. I suggest keeping everything on for the best results. The wash setting provides consumers control throughout the wash cycle. You can opt to wash the pad after cleaning a room or use a duration-based approach. The first option is self-explanatory. The robot will dock and do a pad cleaning cycle after mopping an area, while the second option will do so after mopping for a predetermined time set in the app. Other than that, the S7 Max V retains the same app features as older variants, such as saving up to 4 map levels. Overall, the Roborock S7 Max V Ultra may be the future of self-emptying robot vacuums. It combines the auto-empty and pad cleaning convenience you won't see in most brands. This robot retains the same efficiency and cleaning performance as the previous Roborock S7, but it's more hands-free with the pad cleaning feature. Its obstacle avoidance feature is one of the best in the industry, avoiding nearly everything except stretch out wires and a weighing scale. It's an excellent self-emptying robot option if you don't mind the massive base station and the high cost.
If you've made it this far, I'd like to say thank you and consider giving this video a thumbs up if it's been helpful to you. Subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I publish new reviews like this. Links are in the description for more information. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.